Hello, welcome to a micro video. We're going to spend a few minutes thinking about the concept, the important concept of price elasticity of supply. So what is price elasticity of supply? Well, basically, it measures the responsiveness of supply of a good or a service to a change in the price of that particular product. This focuses on the ability of producers, suppliers, growers, manufacturers on the supply side of the market to be able to respond to demand. An interesting shorthand definition is to ask the question, is supply elastic or inelastic? Well, can a producer respond easily, quickly and without extra cost when there's an increase in demand for their product? That really is what elasticity of supply is all about. And of course, there is always a formula for calculating price elasticity of supply. Here it is. It's the percentage change in the quantity of supply of good X divided by the percentage change in the price of good X. Now, when price of good X goes up, normally supply will rise as well. So you're going to get a positive number, positive coefficient for elasticity. The key thing is the, is the actual value. Is it a high or low value for elasticity of supply? Uh, in this uh, little video, I'm going, to, I'm going to pose for you four multiple choice questions. Let's see if you can get all four right. Just press the pause button uh, when, you, when you want to have a go. If the PES for a particular product has a value of plus 2.0, what does this mean? Have a go at this question. Well, the answer is, uh, the answer is C. A 1% increase in price leads to a 2% increase in the quantity supplied. Supply is responsive to price. So when I think about different products, different goods and services, it's interesting to ask this question, you know, what makes supply elastic, responsive, or inelastic? relatively unresponsive. Let's consider here that maybe you're a baked bean manufacturer and you're asked to produce an extra 10,000 cans of baked beans a day. Is that possible? Well, I think in reality, the answer is yes. Uh, manufacturers, of course, with mass production could perhaps add an extra shift onto their production lines, providing they have the stocks of raw materials of aluminium cans and baked beans and, and other resources, providing they've got the capacity to supply it should be fairly elastic contrast that with this question what's the elasticity of building a new nuclear power plant well it can take many many years and sometimes more than a decade to get permission plan uh, design build construct test and bring into play a new power plant so the elasticity of nuclear power of supply of nuclear power is highly inelastic in the short term because because just the pure length of time it takes to establish a new plant. What about housing? Let's say you've got a fast growing town or city and you're asked, can you build 2000 new homes in a given time period to meet growing demand? Well, I think in this situation, the supply of new homes tends to be inelastic in part because of the need for planning permission, uh, architectural design, structural uh, design, building of, of the houses themselves, snagging, etc. So it can take many months for new housing development to be built. So housing supply, particularly new housing, tends to be relatively inelastic in the short term. What about ordering a Domino's pizza at peak times, expecting it within half an hour? Well, at peak times, the franchisee, the Domino's Pizza Palace, may well be operating pretty close to full capacity. Maybe their, their ovens are working overtime. They may have some spare labor, but perhaps they're running perhaps short of, uh, of, of raw materials, ingredients, who knows? Again, at peak times, supply can become inelastic because in this case, pizza makers are running up against capacity constraints. Whereas at off peak times, you make an order of pizza at eight o'clock in, in the afternoon and it can arrive before four, etc. What about growing more avocado to meet increasing global demand? Well, I guess this is an interesting uh, example of a fairly inelastic supply because of the time it takes to grow new plantations for the trees to bear fruit. Avocado is something which can be stored, but it's a fairly perishable fruit. It has to be stored at certain temperatures, and so therefore there are not going to be limited, there are going to be limited stocks of avocados. So I would suggest the supply here is fairly inelastic, particularly in the short term. And uh, what about the, uh, the supply of seats at a Premier League stadium, such as Anfield? Elastic or inelastic supply? 
Well, I think here we'd probably say it's perfectly inelastic in a given time period. Let's say per season, the stadium will, will, um, will basically have a, a fixed capacity. In that sense, the supply becomes perfectly inelastic. So here's a relatively elastic supply curve, price elastic, where a big change in demand from D1 to D2, significant increase in demand. Well, that looks as if the producer is able to increase quantity in equilibrium quite easily with only a fairly small increase in price. Supply will tend to be price elastic when a supplier has plenty of spare capacity available to increase output. So spare labour, spare capital machinery, spare raw materials and component parts. Supply will tend to be price elastic when a producer has high stock levels, sometimes called inventory. You see, if there's a rise in demand, then a producer can immediately release those stocks onto the market to meet that increase in demand. So high stocks are consistent with elastic supply. Supply tends to be price elastic when there's a short production time frame. The pizza example is quite a good one, or the baked beans, anything which is mass produced. It doesn't take many minutes or hours to get a new product to market. So when the short, when the manufacturing process is highly efficient, that tends to increase supply elasticity. And the fourth factor is often not, not mentioned by students, but a good one. Uh, supply will tend to be elastic when the ease of factor substitution is high. That means that if you get a, a shift in demand towards your product, you need to increase or ramp up production. Can you bring in labour and capital and other resources quickly? Can you switch them from one occupation to another uh, to increase supply? When you can do that, when workers are occupationally and geographically mobile, that can increase the elasticity of supply. In contrast, an inelastic supply curve, S1 in this situation, a big increase in demand again. Notice here there's only a limited increase in output from Q1 to Q2. And in fact, when this happens, if there's a big rise in demand, what you tend to see happening is a significant increase in the market price rather than the quantity bought and sold. Two extreme values. Here's a perfectly elastic supply curve, sometimes called a constant cost supply curve. Any change in demand can be met pretty much immediately without any change in the market price. And in class, we were saying, well, what might what might count as that? And we thought things like maybe downloads, app downloads. You know, the supply of app downloads is pretty perfectly elastic. You just download it um, or in-game purchases perhaps would be a good example of that. And the alternative, the other extreme, is when there's a perfectly priced inelastic supply. And here the supply is fixed in a given time period and does not respond to a change in the market price. So in this situation, demand's gone up from D1 to D2. The output has stayed exactly the same at Q1. All that's happened is the market price in equilibrium has gone up from P1 to P2. So can you see here these different types of elasticities? Let's go back a slide. Uh, um, elastic. Inelastic, perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic. These questions often come up in multiple choice. Here's a good example of the stadiums again. These are the capacities, the known capacities of the Premier League stadiums in the 2020-21 season. Fulham's capacity limited by building works. Uh, big, big variation there in the, in the capacities of stadiums. Arsenal's just tips over 60,000 60, capacity. Biggest is Man U by, by some distance there. And the new, uh, the new Spurs Stadium, 62,000 capacity. So, to quick research, a quick um, revision here for you. What are the key factors that affect price elasticity? Normally, in an exam question, you might be asked to examine two of them, let's say. One is spare production capacity. To my mind, it's one of the most important factors. If a business has plenty of spare capacity, spare labour, spare land, spare capital, then it should be possible to increase supply without a rise in costs. Supply will be elastic. Supply will, uh, the elasticity also depends on the stocks of your finished products or and intermediate goods. So if you've got high stocks, you can bring those stocks to, into play. If demand goes up, supply will tend to be elastic. Perishable goods, we mentioned avocado, are often harder and more costly to store. And that, again, that tends to make supply less elastic. 
the ease and cost of factor substitution. So if you have factor resources, land and labor and capital, which are very mobile occupationally, then you can bring resources quickly into play if you need to increase demand and that makes supply elastic. But if those resources are highly specific, it tends to make it inelastic. And the time frame for production. Supply tends to be more price elastic uh, the longer we give firms to adjust their production level. So in the immediate period, oftentimes you have a limited supply. It's hard to change, but in the long term, hopefully production can respond. Quick revision. What do the values of the coefficient of price elasticity mean? Well, if price elasticity is greater than one, we say that supply is price elastic, responsive to demand. If it's greater than zero, but less than one, then supply is price inelastic, fairly unresponsive. Uh, for example, a firm may have capacity constraints they're running up against. If the elasticity of supply is zero, we say it's perfectly price inelastic, fixed supply. And if it's that constant cost example, price elasticity is infinity, then we say supply is perfectly price elastic. Here's our second multiple choice question. There are three questions left. Have a go at this. Suppose that the market supply of a product is perfectly price elastic. Which of the following might happen if the demand curve shifts to the left? Press the pause button. Have a go at this question. So what do we think here? The demand curve is shifted to the left. Supply is perfectly elastic. Can you visualize that diagram in your mind? The answer is quantity will fall but the price will stay the same. Whenever there's a shift in demand the market price will stay the same there'll just be a fall in quantity supplied. Question three price elasticity of cocoa uh, is uh, found to be plus 0.4 what's the most likely explanation for this elasticity of supply value? Again have you got the question? Well 0.4 is a relatively low elasticity of supply it's inelastic so we're looking for the most likely explanation as to why producers are not able to get cocoa beans to market if the price or the demand goes up. Uh, a suggests highly elastic. Uh, B again, likewise. Uh, D is more to do with elasticity of demand. The right answer is C. There's been a series of poor harvests. Do you see if there's been a series of poor harvests, it's likely that stock levels of previously harvested cocoa beans will be low. And when stocks fall, supply becomes inelastic. Here we go. Last question. In the long run, price elasticity of supply is higher than in the short run. Which of the following factors, X, Y, Z, explain this difference? Again, have a quick go at this question by pressing the pause button if you want to. So why is price elasticity of supply tend to be, tend to be higher in the long run, the long term, compared with the short term, what do you think? Is it the stock of building machinery can change? Yes. Is it that new firms can enter the market if demand increases? Yes, and they do. Is it the firms can change the scale of their operations? The answer is yes. So the right answer there is D. All three factors explain why long run supply tends to be more price elastic than the short run. There we go. I think we've covered quite a bit. Hopefully you found this useful. It's a key topic, and fully enough, examiners have said it's not one of the best revised topics available in IB. So if you can smash this one, you'll be in great shape. Okay, thank you.